Hey, 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 good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, good evening, and welcome. So here we are once again, ready to get started. It's a new day, a new lesson. Um, <clears throat> so for this evening, I have something to offer you guys because I want to start doing things a little bit different. At the beginning of the lesson, you guys already noticed yesterday that it's not going to be, um, you know, about questions and, and uh, spending too much time about that. Now, something new that we're going to do is that I will give you the chance to do speeches, to do opening words at the beginning of the lesson. And um, every night we're going to have two different topics. Now, that is my um, proposition. However, if you have like options that you would like to share or things that you would like to talk about, um, you will, of course, be very, very welcome to pick your own and to um, to talk about the topic that you desire. However, every night at the very last minutes of the class, we're going to have two people volunteering or even being commanded um, to take one of the topics. For tonight, I wanted to start by sharing what are the topics that we have or that we might, you know, get to discuss uh, or to share in tomorrow's class. And the topic is simply, or the topics are simply, most popular breeds of dogs and how to survive without electricity. Your job will be simple. You guys will simply just have to, you know, look through the internet and gather a little bit of information. Um, it will not have to be memorized. I think it's it will be too hard. But the idea is that you practice a little at the beginning of the class and you provide a speech of around two minutes, let's say. Two minutes, three minutes. I think that will be like, um, you know, enough to get started. And uh, it's like, if you have an option, if you have a topic that you would like to share, you are more than, well, than welcome to, um, to pick that option. However, if you don't, well, there you have it. I'm going to try to have two different topics for every uh, evening. And then, of course, you will get um, to choose from those and to um, do a little bit of research and also explain or talk about those topics on the next class. Now, for this evening, what are the topics that we're going to be discussing? We have ahead of us, uh, we need to finish or to wrap up the topic that we had from yesterday, which was or had to do a little bit with um, <clears throat> appropriate things. Now, in this occasion, we're going to be wrapping it up, talking about useful expressions that we can use um, to start or close conversations. These ones are relatively simple. It's not something that's going to take a long time from us. But then we're going to be jumping into reported speech. Reported speech, just so you know, is a very useful structure that we use normally to do gossip. So if you guys like to gossip, there you're going to have it. It's a very good option, you know, to go ahead and, and like have those moments when you're having coffee with friends and just sharing what somebody else has said. That is what reported speech is going to be used for. And uh, it's basically what we're going to be dipping into in tonight's class. So I hope you guys are doing amazing. Hope you had an amazing uh, night uh, last night because I don't know if where you guys live was raining, but it was raining here. And it was simply delicious, you know, to sleep. But um, yeah, I think we're going to get started straight on with the topics. And as I said, we're going to be covering something that is relatively simple. And then we're going to be jumping into the new topic. So last night we closed um, our conversation talking about um, whether or not you guys are willing to start, you know, talking to people on the bus. Like, how do you feel about that? And we said that depending on who the people are, we feel rather okay um, speaking with them. But when, well, when we have the chance of doing that, when we have the chance of starting a conversation with people or someone that we don't know, how do we start it? Like, what is the main thing that comes to the mind when you need to start a conversation? Now, I want to hear from you. Before anything, I want to hear from you. Para iniciar una conversación, to start a conversation with someone you don't know, what is the topic that you choose first? And uh, let's see in your case, um, Luis Fernando, 
what will be a topic that you choose to talk about when you start a conversation with someone like someone you don't know someone that is the first time you're going to talk to what is the the topic that you pick good evening evening you mean the when i want to start a conversation with someone mm -hmm. you need a topic yeah, what is the topic that you pick when you like, for example, let's say that you are uh, in line for, at the at the bank and you just want to talk to someone. Well, in general, is is talking about a uh, job or sports. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay, so jobs or sports. Nice. That sounds great. Okay. Great. Very good. How about um, what will be a topic that you will pick, um, Claudia? Claudia Iraeta? Okay, maybe later. Um, how about you, Leslie? What will be a topic that you will pick to start a conversation with someone? Like icebreakers, as we normally refer to them as well. So no Leslie either? Uh, oh. No. <clears throat> yes, happy me too. Okay. <laughs> Richard, you yes. come back. I'm sorry. <risa> me dio risa porque no me había fijado. No se fue la luz ni nada. Y fue como que solamente falló el, el internet. Y yo me quedé. ¿Qué pasó? No quieren hablar hoy. Die. Viene bien callado. Y el callado era otro. Bueno, ok. So, uh, as, as I was saying, um, I don't know if did Claudia say what she was going to say. Or did I get to ask you, Claudia? Good evening, teacher. Evening. Did I get to ask you? ¿Escuchó que le preguntara o me corté antes de eso? No, se cortó todo. Ah, oh, oh, okay. Sorry then. Uh, so yeah, I, as I was asking, um, in the case of Luis, uh, Claudia, in your case, what will be a topic that you will pick to break the ice, to start a conversation with someone you don't know? And for me, uh, topic conversation will be about uh, leyes, obviamente. Oh, okay. Yeah, that I mean, I have heard that. I have heard people, you know, getting to know one on uh, one another, talking about things like loss, and that is very very proper. So yeah, it's it's also a, a you know a nice icebreaker. Um, then as I mean in my okay in my case, I thought that uh, Claudia didn't want to answer. I went to ask you, Leslie. In your case, what will be a topic that you think that is like a nice icebreaker? Like when you need to start a conversation with someone that you don't know, that is the first time that you're talking to this person, what will be um, the topic that you go to? Maybe in a bank. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, uh, it's very crowded. <laughs> so very it's cliche. So common. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very cliche. So and... yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> okay. So at the bank, it will be like something related, right, to the situation, like about. Uh -huh like how long the lines are or in my case normally it's about economy like how expensive everything is now you know not, when i'm at the bank is like the most common topic like oh my god everything is so expensive now and uh money doesn't last at all and all that so yeah that's you know a, a common topic that i will pick at the bank um uh, or the weather <laughs> That's what I wanted to get because yeah, that's basically the most common one. Of uh, the weather, it's like que caliente va usted. Like that's the most common thing. Like I, I don't know if you guys do it, but in my case, it's like the most common topic that I pick to start a conversation with people. Uh, yeah, that's another one. Está nublado a la llueva. So yeah, it's 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 it's. Los en estos cajeros, vea. También. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, about like how people are 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 so um how can we say it um lazy let's say, but yeah 
Uh, bueno, entonces, ese era casi como que el inicio, ¿verdad? El saber más o menos cuáles son los temas que ustedes eligen. So, yeah, in, it's, it's very common to go about, like, the environment. Like, we're talking about uh, what we're doing, for example. It, if it's a bank, what you guys said, like, about... The traffic. Um, the, the traffic, that's a very common one. Por ustedes, eso sí. <laughs> Para los de allá, el centro, occidente, es más común. Aquí, en, en Oriente, pues, es bien, bien, bien complejo que la gente hable. O bien difícil, digamos, que la gente hable del tráfico. Because, yeah, it's not something that, you know, uh, it's a common thing. But, yeah, the traffic. I have heard so many people also starting conversations talking about the traffic. Uh, but, yeah, economy, traffic, and weather, I think, are, are, like, the most common ones. And, of course, talking about, well, the situation that you're living at that time. But... Here, at the we... hospital too. Uh huh. Yeah. Also. The the people uh, say that it's wearing too much and that is not medicine and. Qué mal encarada la enfermera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a common thing that yeah many people do. So yeah, it's another uh very common thing like the lack of medicine how like the long lines that sometimes uh, are, or like how... I have a question. ¿Cómo te diría, así como, así como lo que usted acaba de mencionar, cuando una enfermera tiene mal la cara o está mal encarada? El bad temper. She has a bad temper. Let's see. Aquí se lo voy a escribir. Um, digamos, ya le podríamos decir, ya te fijaste la mala cara o ya te fijaste que mal encarada. Uh -huh. Podría decir algo así como, did you notice? All right, come on. Did you notice her bad temper? Sí. Did you notice her bad temper? Sería como, te fijaste en su mal temperamento. Su... Bueno, si fuese directamente a la cara, es que, ah, ya que, no creo que sea problema. Somos adultos todos aquí. Así que, ajá, eso se diría. Se diría. Ah, sí. Okay. Sí. Oh, también creo que se podría decir también I bad fate. Sorry, ¿cómo? También creo que si no me equivoco, se podría decir I, I had a bad fate. Yeah, a bad fate is como, digamos, like basic. It would be like a basic thing to say, like her bad face or... But for that reason is that we have the bad temper. But if we want to go like, you know, full on rude on the on the people, we have we or we will say something like ass face. You know, that's like the, the, the common thing. Sí. A veces tengo miedo mostrarles malas palabras porque después pienso, o sea, que van a decir que ajá, de acá eso vengo. Pero en este caso me la pidieron. No, y hay otra cosa. Con confianza. Pero Cabal. hay otra cosa. Ajá. Sí, este, sí, este, somos adultos, pero en el caso de como la, la clase que ha grabado en YouTube, YouTube es algo susceptible a esas cosas. Uh -huh. Entonces vale. pueden bajar uh -huh. el video. Sí, pero igual, o sea, that is not like too bad. That is not like, like you know, like bad, bad. And the other thing is that the, these videos are not monetized. So that's another reason why it's like, you know, it might be hard. It is more problematic if like for example when i'm uploading the video i will um uh, click on the video is made for kids because as it's not made for kids i mean it is not like that that bad but still that's why most of the time i am um you know careful when i say those kind of things uh but yeah that's like if you wanted me to be honest that is what we say okay and even in spanish me and my sister we normally say that um so yeah when when people have you... uh-huh Sometimes you say it's like a witch. A Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can say, for example, that witch. Uh-huh. You can you can refer to them like that. Um or you can say, for example, she's such a witch as well. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And you can also change the uh the W by a B. <laughs> so yeah, you can replace that as well. But yeah, you can say something like, uh, she's such a witch. Ah, come on. There we go. So, yeah, you have to say something like that. She says your witch. So, yeah. But, well, um, the normal conversation openers that we have, or at least the ones recommended by the book, are something like, how's it going? Okay, that's like a common one, right? How's it going? Very simple. 
We have already talked about it even. So it's like, you know, very common. Then here we go. Leslie, uh, as you were saying, the weather. Can you believe this weather? And then, of course, um, many people are going to have something to argue about it. Like you're going to have to add something, you know, to the weather topic. Because, if, for example, if it's hot, you're going to say, yeah, it's so hot, right? Or if it's like raining, it's like, yeah, it's so wet lately. It's like it's like raining everywhere and all that. Um, so yeah, the weather thing, it's a very common topic. Now, um, if you want, you can also start a conversation by talking or giving people a compliment. I think one of the more, how can we say it, more polite ways of starting a conversation or breaking the ice with someone is, of course, giving them a compliment. Um, that's something something important. When we um talk about that, when we uh do compliments, we say that we say it as give. Okay, give a compliment. So, for example, you notice that the person is wearing I don't know a uh, a nice um watch. Let's say so you can say that's a nice watch. Another thing is maybe asking, like for example, but that I think is a little bit creepy because if you ask, for example. Is that an iPhone 11? Uh, I think it's a bit creepy, you know. To start a conversation, I would not actually recommend it, but some people do it. Some people start conversations by asking about something that you're wearing. Let's say that, for example, you have a pair of shoes that are like special. Uh, maybe they can they can ask you, are those um, the Converse? I don't know, UB something. Um, so yeah, but giving a compliment would be more more recommended. Like for example, just saying, oh, those are nice shoes. Or I like your backpack, for example. Um, of course, talking about objects, because if you go and do a compliment about the person's body it's or better. It's better. Way. If if it's a woman, it's function. <laughs> if you say, ah, I like your eyes, that you have beautiful eyes, and then you say, ah, thanks, and you made my day. And then... <laughs> do, do you think so? For me, yes, I like. Oh, okay, yeah. And I, I mean... and, I, and I used to do that with with people that just women or, or or men, and and I think that it's okay. The people, it is something good for that that you're telling them, and they they feel like ah oh, thanks, and okay. they, their face change. Yeah, because in my perspective, I think that I mean, if I say that to a woman out out of a sudden, I think it would be as well. I would take it as something a little bit creepy. I don't do it. Like I, I mean, I. <laughs> rarely start conversations with people as i said yesterday i prefer to start talking to like um elderly people uh but the thing is that yeah i will i wouldn't do it in my case but if you say it works you know i will i will feel great if people come to me and tell me like i like your haircut or something like that it's like yeah as you say you make somebody's day it's like yeah, yeah they, they who is not gonna feel well you know at getting a compliment out of a sudden so yeah uh but if you know, if you want to go with art with objects, I think it's like a little bit more recommended. Yeah. yeah. Recommended, yeah. Okay. So how about this other one? Do you know many people here? This one probably will be something that um in our country will not be recommended. But in the US is you know like more regular because from there you may also start talking about, for example, where you come from. Or if you, for example, are just visiting, you can say that, no, I'm not from around here. Uh, and then, of course, then you move on into the conversation. This, of course, is if you want to start a conversation. Now, conversation closers or ways to uh, simply end in the conversation. This one is so common, saying just see you later, even though... Maybe you're never going to see this person again. If, as I said, the example is starting a conversation um, on the bus. So maybe you're never in your life going to see this person again. But it's polite to say, okay, see you later. Um, then, of course, we have things like, sorry, I've got to run. Um, talk to you soon. See, here we have a lot of um, linking sounds with this because, as you notice, we don't stop and say, sorry, I've got to run. We simply say, I got to run. Sorry, I've got to run. Talk to you soon. Now, this is once again, this is just because we're being polite. Okay. It's not like, don't take it literal. It's not like you are best friends now and now you're going to like be texting one another and all. 
uh it's just you know a way of saying bye uh without necessarily um so long that would be another a, a, a way to, of saying it so long okay <clears throat> so yeah um sorry i got to run talk to you soon um it was great to meet you this one i think if like you know if it's a conversation that you had on the bus and you don't know the person and you don't like connect with the person i feel it's like the best way to close a conversation it was great to meet you simply you know greeting them saying them uh, or kind of ask i mean kind of thanking them for their time and you just close the conversation there like there's no um how can we say this there's no like uh there's no further 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 what uh ah further compromise there's no further compromise with the conversation or the friendship with this person it's just we're done okay we met we're done now another one is i should get going i'll call you later that's another option however this option over here i'll call you later is the one that i say it's like a little bit of a compromise you know telling them someone that you're gonna call, you're gonna call them later maybe you can do this if you, as you, as I said, if you connected with the person, if you had like a such a great conversation and now you feel like you're friends, but <laughs> sorry, if not, just simply you can go like, okay, I should get going. <clears throat> sorry, one second. Now, as I said, um, the thing is like Dorena was asking me, um, how do you say que le vaya bien? So you have that, that option to say so long and that simply means hasta la próxima basically or, or, or like you know like see you never <clears throat> so yeah so long okay uh then there is also the option that i use and it's not common but it is accepted um telling someone have a nice life you know it's like um you don't know if you're gonna meet again but um yeah then if you want to be romantic and if you, I mean, not romantic in the way of like truly being romantic, romantic in the sense of like the way of speaking, you can also say till we meet again. Uh, once. All right, there we go. So if um, you want to be romantic, you can say something like that. Okay, till we meet again. But that doesn't mean, you know, necessarily that you're going to meet again. It's just a way of saying bye. And uh, just like, as I said before, like thanking the person for the time or for the conversation that you had. But it's not like a compromise. It's not like you're asking them to meet again. It's more like um, simply regarding the, the nice time, let's say, that you had with them. So, yeah, it's not like something that like tight you know like it's not like you're gonna continue having such a great um relationship so yeah now here we have the topic for tonight which is reported speech reported speech as i said in the beginning it's a topic that we're going to follow or we're going to use when we are doing a little bit of gossip okay when we are chambreando so that's what happens. Reported speech simply is to state somebody else's words in my words, but not taking the compromise of saying these words from my perspective. It's simply saying that someone else said something. And its title simply states that because it's reported. You know, it's like something I'm telling you that somebody else did or said. So, yeah, we have simple statements here. For example, when we have the simple statements, we can be uh, talking about something like, it's a big secret, okay? That's the statement. That's what the other person said. And here it's very important that you take it with that. It's like something that somebody else has said. It's not something that you say, okay? When we use reported speech, it's always going to be something that comes from somebody else. It's not something that comes from me. So... Someone said, it's a big secret. Now, if I'm telling this to someone else, I'll have to say something like, he said or she said that it was a big secret. Now, some changes here is, of course, 
this was said earlier. So it's the past. When I say this, when I report this, I am going to do it in the past, using the past um, to refer to the action and also using the past or not using the past simply, but taking a step back, okay? Just, we're gonna take a step back in um, what is re regarded as the tense for the verb. And here the tense was present. Therefore, the tense for the reporter's speech, we have to do past or we have to be past. Therefore, we have to say something like he said, it was a big secret. Now, the that in reporter speech is something that you're going to use mostly when it's something dramatic, okay? In this case, for example, we could add the that. Uh, for example, we can say, he said that it was a big secret. Um, mostly as, as well, you use that when you're not agree with what was said, okay? Like when you um when you're in disagreement with this thing. So you do it in two um most common ways. When you want to add dramatism to the thing, and when you want to uh, state that it's not necessarily your opinion. It's like ella dijo eso. So something like that will be when you add the that in the reporter's speech. Now, another example is I'm getting a terrible grade. And then in the reporter's speech form, we will say something like, she said that he was getting a terrible grade. Okay, I'm getting a terrible grade. Um, so we will have to say something like, he said that he was getting a terrible grade. So I am, once again, simply reporting, changing the verb here from am, which is in the present, to was, which is in the past. He said that he was getting a terrible grade. So uh, that is, you know, a, a little bit of how we can work with uh, the reporter's speech. It's relatively simple. It's not really like that hard. However, it's important to understand the fact that we have that tiny change that um, every structure is going to take a step back in the past. I would like to hear you guys now reading the examples. So let's see if we can get, for example, um, Sandra. Can you help me with the third example here? Can you please read it? Uh, we aren't talking about you. Mm -hmm. And then in the reporter switch form? They claim that they hadn't been talking about me. Okay, great. We weren't talking about you. That is as what I say or what, you know, what somebody else said. Uh, we weren't talking about you. Here, we use the word claim. And here, once again, it, we have a different word, claim, because when we say claim is, um, once again, is stating that we don't agree with what someone was saying. Okay, when we say claim, um, it's like saying that um, this person said this, but I don't believe it. So claim is is a word that we used to refer to something like that. Um, so yeah, let's see. When um, <clears throat> claim, just so you guys know, is something similar to say afirmar. Sí, afirmar o decir, ¿verdad? Es bastante similar, pero el caso es que claim se usa para eso, ¿verdad? para hablar acerca de cosas en las que yo no estoy de acuerdo y que simplemente estoy como queriendo ponerlo así de frente, ¿verdad? Eh, que ellos dijeron esto. Sí, they claimed. Uh, they claimed that they were, they hadn't been talking about me. Entonces, si esto incluye el you, si the reported thing or the thing that someone said includes you, then it's in the reported speech form, it's going to be me, okay? So that's also something to take into account. Now, we also had this one. They got engaged. They got engaged. In the reported speech form, it's going to be something like they said or he said they had gotten engaged. Why? Because here it's already in the past. The, t the prior examples were in the present form, but this one is in the past. And as I said, if it's the past, we're going to have to turn it one step back and it had to be past perfect, basically. So it will have to be something like he said that they hadn't gotten engaged. They had gotten engaged. Now, how about example number five? The one that comes after um, talking about you. 
Uh, can I please get um, Gabriela? Gabriela Cortez. Can you please help me with this one? Okay. She's been absent since Thursday. She said that she has been absent, absent since Thursday. All right. Great. So she's been absent since, since Tuesday. And then we have in the report a speech form. He said she had been absent since Tuesday. So she said she had he said she had been absent since Tuesday. Uh as, as well, here when we're just doing a report, as I said before, there's no need to include the that. Okay. And it's not like all the time we're gonna have to say that. Um here, for example, is simply like, I don't know, just telling a teacher or a classmate about what someone said about someone else. So we just Go and report it. Just, just say, you know, she said uh, she had been absent since Tuesday. How about this one? Um, let's see if we hear from Luis in the second last example. Which one, excuse me? Second last, this one over here. The one that says we at the beginning. We have never been. Mm-hmm. There before. Okay, and now in the reporter speech form. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, he said that he would meet me at the cafe. Okay. No, the thing is that here it's we're simply reading. We're simply reading this. We're gonna have examples later on, but uh, right now we're simply just like trying to read. And now I hope or I expect that you guys will also um notice a change that we have or something that actually not a change, not a change, something that didn't change because here the structure is had never been. We had never been there before, and then in the next section it's once again had never been. So we say, she said that they had okay. never been. And why is it that it doesn't change? The reason why, the reason it doesn't change is because we cannot go farther than past perfect. So that's that's something that happens. Uh, it's basically impossible to go farther than this. So it's, um, you know, the, the like the last the step. Entonces, este no cambia por eso, ¿verdad? Porque es básicamente imposible ir más atrás que el pasado perfecto. Se va a quedar hasta ahí. Entonces, si una oración viene del pasado perfecto, we're going to stick with past perfect. All right. How about this one? I'll meet you at the cafe. This one is, you know, uh, in the future. It's uh, a future tense. I'll meet you at the cafe. And then the example in reported speech will be something like, he said he would meet me at the cafe. So it's, you know, it's something that I'm I'm telling someone else, once again, about what somebody else has told me. So, por eso les digo, esta estructura es más que todo utilizada a la hora de hablar acerca del chismorreo, ¿verdad? Porque estoy pasando información que obtuve de alguien más a un tercero. Entonces... Eso básicamente es la idea. Now, we also have changes in questions. When we get questions um, or when we're like, you know, telling the story, um, of course, there are going to be moments when there is a question in, in, in between. And when we get questions, we will sound or there will sound something like this. Did you know about the layoffs? Did you know about the layoffs? And then in the reporter's speech, you will see something like, I ask him, if he had known about the layoffs. Now here, of course, this one is not necessarily <clears throat> coming from someone else. This is uh, in the case that you ask this question. Okay, that is the change that we're gonna have here because here the question is you asking the question. Now, if it was somebody else asking you the question, it will have been something like he asked me if, uh, if I had known about the layoffs, okay? So that is the only thing that um that will change here. So here, as I said, it's me asking the question. And so 
I in the reported speech form, I say I ask him if he had known about the layoffs. Um, this is okay. So just to be clear, I am saying the fact that I mean it's a common structure for um for gossiping, but it's also one of the most, if not the most common structure that is used in laws. Because when you are also reporting or presenting something into a, like a a, a a case of law, you are once again going to be stating things that are not necessarily from your perspective, but are coming also from somebody else's perspective or from somebody, from somebody else's opinion. Therefore, this is very common to see when you're talking about um, a case of law, you know, something that has to do with laws. So yeah, just, just just so you guys also have a clear idea that that is another use that we have for the report of the speech. Now, uh, another way in which questions can change. Uh, this is a double H question. The first one was uh, simply a yes, no question. So when we have double H questions, it's gonna be something like, what are you saying? Okay, what are you saying? That is the question that I'm asking. Okay, it's a question that I'm asking. And the reported speech form is going to be, I asked them what they were saying. I asked them what they were saying. So here, one thing that is going to happen is that the double H words are not necessarily going to change, once again, are not necessarily going to change a lot in terms of <clears throat> of the, the verbs and mostly when they are in like the gerund form. However, what is going to change is going to be the first verb. Okay, the first verb, which is this one over here. That is something that we have to remember as well because the verb that is going to change most of the time is going to be the first one, not the second one. Here we have two different verbs, but the verb, the verb that is affected by the reported speech is the first one. <clears throat> so that's something also to keep in mind. Now, in terms of commands, Commands are basically like orders, okay? It's like something I tell you to do, and then if you want to report this to somebody else, that's when you're gonna use reported speech with commands. Um, my command is simply don't say anything. Don't say anything. <clears throat> now, this, once again, comes back into being a phrase coming from somebody else, and the reported speech form will be he warned his friend not to say anything. He warned his friend not to say anything. So once again, as I said, this is a way <clears throat> of doing like gossip here. Okay. So basically that's what's happening here. Now, and uh, <clears throat> when we do this, something to take into consideration is that commands are not necessarily going to go um you know, the, the verb is not necessarily going to change, <clears throat> but what is going to be the change um, fact here is going to be this, the verb that we use to report what happened. So this verb, once again, is always going to be in the past. So those are the two main things to consider, that this verb, the one that you use to report, is always in the past, and that sometimes, or depending on what you're saying, the verb the verbs in the reported sentence or the reporter's statement is not necessarily going to be transformed into a past um, verb. Because here, we don't necessarily have to change it. We only change this one. So we say he warned his friend not to say anything. Now, uh, but, yes? Mm -hmm? But you can say in that, in that uh, he asked me or he asked his friends, or he asked him, or he asked her, that it can change, or it has to be his friend in the word warm. In warm? Yeah, it can uh, say, it can change, like uh, he asked his friends, or he asked her, or he asked him not yes. to say anything. Yeah, but the thing is that um, the reason why we will have to go with something like this, words like warned or ordered, is because it's a command. So we will have ah. to use a stronger word because when you use ask, is normally, you know, as, as, as a favor. When, okay. when we have a command, we'll have to use a, use a stronger verb, like warned or order or demanded. 
for example. Okay. Those are those will be the verbs that you could use here. He demanded his friend to um I don't know, for example, if he was um <clears throat> give me a bottle of water. So it will it will have to be like he demanded his friend to give him a bottle of water or who, to give okay. him some water. Yeah. So um uh, yeah, that would be like like the only thing because ask is too soft of a verb, let's say. It's a little okay. bit too soft. Mm -hmm. Now, with general truth, oh, verdades absolutas, general truth, um, we have the example. The sun rises in the east. Sun rises in the east. Now, in the reporter's speech for general truth, it will be something like, she said, the sun rises in the east. So, no change in the tense once again. So there is no need to change the tense. As you see, it's simply the, ver the verb stays as it is. So what we do is just explain what someone has said and just leave it at that. So if, for example, here, um, I cannot think of more general truths right now, but if it was in the past, if she said, for example, she, um, the sun rised in the east this morning, just as an example, you know, for, for something in the past, um, we will have to keep it like that. We will have to say, she said the sun rised in the east this morning. So no need to change the, um, the tense. We will not have to say, for example, she said that the sun had risen, had risen, which will be, you know, the, 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 the past, um, the, the perfect past form um, for this verb. It will not have to be like that. It will have to stay as simply rise. She said the sun had or the sun rise um, in the east this morning. So there's no need to change it. Now we're gonna move into more examples that I have here. Ahora sí quisiera tener verdad la oportunidad de escucharles más a ustedes, porque aquí vamos a ver de forma ordenada cada uno de los verbos, o sea, cómo van avanzando. Empezamos con el presente simple y así hacia abajo vamos a ir teniendo. Eh, cada uno de los demás tenses y los cambios que estos van sufriendo a medida, ¿verdad? Que se va convirtiendo, digamos, en algo ya más hacia atrás. También tenemos algunos modales, porque a veces se utilizan, lo, lo, ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Que los verbos modales son bien comunes. So, yeah, that's another way eh, that we're going to be looking at. Ahora, so we have the present, per, the present simple. Um, let's see. Lorena, can you please help me reading the examples here for present simple? Okay. I like ice cream. She said that she liked ice cream. Very good. So very simple, right? I like ice cream. She said that she liked ice cream. Now, something that I forgot to tell you. Um, this, as you guys already know, um, pronouns are simply a replacement for, for the name, right? For somebody's name. So here, if we haven't um, actually mentioned person's name like who are we talking about we will have to replace this with the name okay the the pronoun we will have to replace it with the name we will have to say for example something like um rosa said okay rosa said she liked ice cream instead of saying she said she liked ice cream because as normally as we use um the pronouns we will have to state the person's name beforehand so that the pronoun has meaning so that's just a reminder. It's something that, you know, it's just so you keep it in mind and don't forget that it's necessary um, to, <clears throat> to, to, to mention the person's name before we go and use the pronoun. Now, how about present continuous? Let's see if we hear from um, Gabriela. Ms. Garcia, can you please help me with present continuous, the two examples here? Okay, I'm living in London. She said that she was living in London. Great. So simple, right? This the change that takes place here is that we add was. Was um, before the main verb. So I'm living in London. And then we have the report of the speech. She said she was living in London. So she said she was living in London. Great. Um for example. If, uh, let's say that you go to the airport to pick up a, a, a family, okay, so a cousin, let's say, and this cousin has told you, I'll be there at five, let's say. So you will have to use the reported speech form as she said she was 
going to be here at five. See, so she said she was going to be here at five. I'm going to be there at five. She said she was going to be here at five. <clears throat> so that is as, as simple as it gets and in the way of using present continuous. Now, Imelda, can you please help me with past simple? Of course, um, I bought a car. She said that she had bought a car or she said that she bought a car. Great. Okay, so in the case of the past form, we can use the two, the two ways. Um, here, the simple change that takes place is that uh, this one, according to some grammar experts, is the most recommended one because this one is, is following the idea of taking a step back. Okay, so it's, you know, it's the most recommended one. However, this other form is also accepted. It is not the most common, but is also accepted. The reason why it's different is simply because we have that, um, the way in which we simply add the pronoun before the action, that's what's turning it into a reported speech sentence. That is the reason why it's accepted because uh, we are adding here the pronoun. And so that means for, you know, for some grammar experts that it's a reported speech sentence. It's not something that you're saying, it's something that comes from someone else. So for some people that simple um, thing makes it a reported speech. Uh, but this is a specific thing that happens with past simple. It's not going to happen with many of the rest of the um of the tenses. Now, how about past continuous? Can I please hear from you, Walter Quintanilla, in past continuous? Okay, seems like Walter is not available. How about Carla? Can you please help me, Carla? Yes, I'm sorry, teacher. teacher. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. So, Walter. Sorry. Sorry, Carlita. I'm sorry, teacher. I, I'm i driving my car. Oh, that's okay. Morning. That's okay. All right. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Okay, Carla. Can you please help me? Yes, teacher. <laughs> yes, teacher. Um, oh, I, I was walking along the street. Uh, she said, she had been walking along the street. Okay. Very good. So here you see the change from past continuous, which is was walking or the was turns into had been. Okay. So was is going to turn into had been. So whenever someone says something like that, I was walking along the street, I was um, eating dinner with my family. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have to say something like, he said he had been eating dinner with his family. So it's going to change into had been the use of was. Now, how about present perfect? We come back into the present. Um, but as you guys already know, present perfect is a structure coming from a past action. Uh, so let's see. Can you please help me, Claudia? Present perfect, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Yes. I haven't seen Julie. She say she hasn't seen Julie. Great. I hadn't. I haven't seen Julie. So here it's in present perfect. Okay. I haven't seen Julie. So very simple, right? Now in the past or in the reported speech form, it is simply going to go one step back in the past. So haven't is going to turn into hadn't. So this is. Past perfect. So it's basically just that. I haven't is going to turn into hadn't. Now, how about past perfect? Um, let's see. Leslie, can you please help me read this one? Okay. Uh, I had taken English lesson before. She said that she had taken English lesson before. Great. Okay. So as I said previously, um, I told you that there is no further back than the past perfect. Therefore, it's just going to be like that. So when you have a past perfect, um, you cannot go further into the past. Therefore, 
it's gonna have to stay like that. Ok, aquí básicamente es imposible operar, ¿verdad? Porque, o sea, ya no hay más atrás que el pasado perfecto. Así que por eso mismo se va a quedar así. O sea, se va a quedar en pasado perfecto. Pero va a ser reported speech por el mismo caso que es el reported speech. Este, esta forma, ¿verdad? De el past simple. Porque utilizamos el pronombre de otra persona. Estamos diciendo, ella dijo. Entonces, por eso mismo se va a, a validar y por el hecho de que, pues, es básicamente imposible de forma gramatical, ir más atrás que el pasado perfecto. So, yeah. She said she hadn't, uh, she had taken English classes before, or English lessons before. All right. Ahora tenemos estos que son ya algunos de los que, como les decía, van a ser um, modal verbs and the differences that they have. So, we have uh, the first one. In the case of will. Yeah, will. So, will. It's going to change. Yes, will is going to change. And it's going to change into would. So it's, I'll see you later. Okay, that's the, that's the thing. I will see you later or I'll see you later. And in the reporter speech form, it's going to change into, she said she would see me later. She said she would see me later. So simple, right? Just that. That's going to be the change. Now, <clears throat> would. Would. As it is already an infinitive, it is going to stay like that. So would is, for example, I will help, but there, of course, you can create as many excuses as you want. But the thing is, I will help, but it is going to stay like that. She said she will help, but, and of course, you simply report back um, the, the excuses that the other person plays in this example. So would is going to keep its form. It's going to say or stay as would. Then we have can. Can. Can, as we already know, or we have already discovered, um, it is normally seen that um, the verb could is the past of can. And when we talk about possibilities or abilities, it is the case. Therefore, it is going to be used the same here. I can speak perfect English. I can't speak perfect English. That is the um, the basic sentence. Now, in the reporter speech, it's going to be, she said she could speak perfect English. She said she could speak perfect English. So we simply change the can into could because that is like the closest thing that we have to the path of can. And then in the case of could, it doesn't have a past form for could. So could is going to stay like that. It's going to be could. I could swim when I was four. So here it's going to stay like that. She said she could swim when she was four because there is no past for this past version. Um, then we have shall. Shall is I shall come later. I shall come later. Now, in this case, we are going to um, transform shall into would. Shall, if you guys don't know, it is very similar to the meaning of will. Okay, it's very, very similar to the meaning of will. Um, therefore, we're going to turn it into would. And we will have to say, I shall come later, like she would come later. She said she would come later. Uh, and then we have should. And should, once again, it's somehow an infinitive. Therefore, it is not going to change and it's going to keep its form. And we say, I should call my mother. That is the example that we have. And it's going to stay exactly the same. She said that she would, uh, sorry, that she should call her mother. So she said that she should call her mother. Okay, so um, very simple, right? Very easy, I think. It's not like too tricky. Ahora, uh, voy a explicar así en español el, la, la actividad que les decía para este módulo, porque vamos a estar trabajando de forma un poquito diferente. <ríe> en esta ocasión, lo que vamos a hacer será que al principio de las clases ustedes van a tener la oportunidad de hacer un pequeño speech, o sea, un, um, básicamente una pequeña presentación. Y el detalle es que va a haber dos opciones. La primera es que elijan ustedes, digamos, de forma voluntaria cuál es el tema del que quisieran hablar y la segunda es 
que si no hay voluntarios, ¿verdad? Para la siguiente noche, porque esto va a ser asignado de noche a noche. Si no hay voluntarios, entonces, en este caso, yo asignaría a quienes van a, a ser las personas encargadas y los temas. Sí, cada noche yo voy a tratar de tener dos temas diferentes que ustedes deberán investigar. No es cuestión de memorizarse nada, sino que simplemente tener ahí, ¿verdad? En su teléfono, computadora, un párrafo en el cual ustedes tengan unos dos minutos, ¿sí? Dos, tres minutos es suficiente. Al principio de cada clase, entonces, vamos a hacer el ingreso y, pues, las personas que tengan la responsabilidad de ese día de hacer el speech van simplemente a presentar la información que hayan encontrado. So, it's very simple. It's not um, really tricky. Uh, and this is also just to give you guys the chance, you know, to practice at the beginning of the lessons without giving you um, the, the straight sentences or the straight um, and questions. And that, of course, is also going to take away a long waiting time for um, for the rest. Um, so, Imelda, sorry, what were you going to say? No, I, I want to say that it sounds cool. Oh, okay, great. So, um... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if we have volunteers for tonight, I would like to get to know who you guys are and, well, the topics or think about the topics that you might want to talk. Now, if I don't have volunteers, because I know it's like, you know, it's it's like a, a, like a shotgun, kind of, um, I have the two topics ready. As I said, I, a ver, los dos temas que tenía para, digamos, en el caso que no hubiese voluntarios, It would be this too. Most popular breeds of dogs and how to survive without electricity. Now, you can take those topics if you want, because that is also an option. You can take these topics. But if not, um, you can create your own topic. It's not like, you know, if you if you want to participate and uh, you don't know what topic or you don't have a topic in mind, well, you can pick one of my two topics. So, yeah. Do now that you guys know the topics, the topics, the possible topics for tomorrow, do I have any volunteers for tomorrow? Okay, Imelda, which of the two topics would you like to take? Most popular breeds of of dogs. Great. All right. Nice. Um, and do I have any other volunteer? Okay, Gabriela, would you like to propose your own topic, or would you like to take um? the second topic my own topic but i don't i don't know right now what which topic i should choose okay great nice so it's gonna be a surprise ahora de ahora en adelante igual verdad ustedes ya están sabidos que esa será básicamente una actividad al final de la clase entonces cuando tengan el deseo de participar o sea simplemente vayan pensando verdad en um en los temas ahora bien Email de Gabri y Gabriela, de ustedes dos, voy a tomar el nombre, porque si participan mañana, no tendrán chance de participar hasta que terminemos, ¿verdad?, con la ruleta. La idea es que todos participemos al, me al menos una vez durante el módulo haciendo una presentación. Y recuerden, dos a tres minutos, ¿verdad?, unos dos parrafitos que tengamos listos con la información. It will be enough. So, um, yeah. Tomorrow, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up because um, there is not much time left. And we were about to get into the questions thing. So, yeah, it's going to be tricky, you know, to have enough time to explain the questions and then the commands because there is more information also about the commands. Now, uh, Lorena, in your case, I will answer the questions that you sent me in a little bit. Uh, I you, wanted to... You, you know that I was thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> wanted to. I wanted to during the class, but yeah, we have run out of time. So yeah, it's not so possible hard. right now. But I will send Thanks. you the answers in just a bit. Um, so yeah, well, for the rest, thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope I'll see you tomorrow. I'm excited to hear from Imelda and Gabriela tomorrow. So um, yeah, have a really good night and see you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. See, see ya. You.